Hello everyone, my name is Mario So and today we're going to take a deep dive into how I edited this product video. So it's great to see you back here on the channel again. I hope you had a great Christmas and that you're enjoying your holiday season. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and create weekly content on filmmaking, photography, gear review, and video editing tutorials. If you're already subscribed, thanks again for being here. Your support is always appreciated. So a few days ago, I released a video on how I shot a festive product video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I recommend you watch that first before you watch this video editing breakdown. It'll make it easier for you to understand my thought process behind every single shot. So if you haven't watched that behind the scenes video yet, go ahead, pause this video and go watch that first. So now that you've had some time to watch that video, let's dive in into this editing breakdown. So I had a storyboard and I had an idea of the order of the different shots. So once I went to the editing process, it was easier for me to lay down each of the different shots. What I did first was select all the usable clips of all the different shots and I put them all into one sequence. What I did then was select the clips that I thought I would most likely use or I was 90% certain I would use and I put them all one level higher on video layer 2. So that just gives me a visual of the clips that I know I wanted to use. And after that, what I did was duplicate that sequence and create another sequence so that if I made any changes or if I deleted anything, I'll still have the base clips that I selected from the first cut. This is a good practice to have just so that you can easily go back to a previous edit or go back to previous footage that you wanted. Sometimes what ends up happening is you delete that footage by mistake or maybe you deleted it on purpose and you have to go back because there is a change or the client wants something different then you don't have to go back into your source footage and dig through that footage and select those clips again. You can just go back into your first cut or your base cut and select footage from that cut. And it just makes the entire workflow a lot easier. So once I had selected this clip, what I did was uh, I went on to time remapping because I knew I wanted to adjust the speed of this clip, especially when the tub of hot chocolate is sliding into the frame. So I hit command or control click on the clip at the points where I wanted to add the keyframe. And from there, you can drag the little ears on the two keyframes here. And what this does is that you can smoothen out the keyframe so there is a gradual shift in speed and not a jump in speed. It's a more smooth speed ramp. Also wanted to mention that that clip was shot at 60 frames per second, so I slowed it down on a 24 frames per second timeline. So I slowed down the clip by 40%. For this next shot, I had these three marshmallow clips selected and what I did again was also raise them up to video layer 2 and I just simply just copy and pasted these three clips. And what I did next was send these clips to After Effects, replace with After Effects composition. And the reason why I wanted to keep the base three clips on video 1 untouched is again for that same reason. If I wanted to go back and make a change or I didn't like what I did then at least I could go back to those three clips and have them all cut and ready to go for a, a new try of whatever I wanted to do with them. So for this shot, I wanted to use maybe one or two marshmallows and just duplicate them. And I also needed a clean plate of just the background by itself without anything in the shot. So once in After Effects, what I did first was to key out that green. So I used the key light effect to key out the green. You can use the color picker tool and click on the green. And as you can see here, some of the green or most of the green was removed, but there was still stuff on the edges of that clip that uh, the green or the key light effect couldn't pick up. So what I did next was just create a rough mask around the marshmallow and I keyframed that mask so that it would contain the marshmallow as it rotated. I did the exact same process with the second marshmallow. So what I did next was add a CC simple wire removal effect to try to remove the stick from the marshmallows. So you select point A and point B just to make sure you cover that stick and you enable the keyframes for both point A and point B since you will be keyframing this 
to make sure that the effect follows the stick throughout the entire shot. I then adjusted the thickness of the effect just to make sure most of that wire or that stick was removed. This was a slow process and there's no way to track it that I know of unfortunately so you have to go frame by frame and then just do this manually. Thankfully the key light effect was able to remove most of that stick from the top of this marshmallow so I only had to worry about the bottom stick. The next part of this marshmallow shot was in my opinion the most fun and interesting part to work on. Once I had all these marshmallows maxed out, I introduced the background and I put it at the bottom of all of these two marshmallows. I also added the matte choker effect on the marshmallows because this effect helps me to clean the edges of that marshmallow. So next I added keyframes for scale and rotation to the marshmallows just to make the shot a little bit more interesting and have the marshmallows just be more randomized. And what I also like to do with my keyframes is uh, to smoothen them out. So you can right click once you have the keyframes highlighted, you can right click, go to keyframe assistant and just click on easy ease. In terms of scale, I made the marshmallows start from zero. So there'll be nothing in the screen and then they'll just pop in into the shot one by one. So with that, I just duplicated the marshmallows and I just staggered the beginning of each of these clips of the marshmallows so that they would start popping into the screen at different times. So what I did next to create that zoom through illusion was to make all of these marshmallow clips uh, 3D. So you can just click on the 3D button on After Effects in each of the marshmallow layers. From there, I added a 3D camera in After Effects. So you can do that just by right clicking I uh, new and click on camera and I just use the default camera that it provides and whenever I'm using the 3D camera I like to do a two view on my screen so I can see uh, not only the what I see on the screen the composite and everything but I also get a top-down view of the 3D space and where each object is in relation to that 3D camera. So what I did next was um, arrange the 3D space of each of the marshmallows so I just randomized them at different points in that 3D space so when the camera flies through there'll be different marshmallows in different spaces. So for the camera what I did I created a keyframe for position so for the beginning keyframe of that camera I dragged it all the way at the front and at the end uh, I dragged the camera to zoom through and it'll give you that impression as if your camera was zooming through different marshmallows. I added also more marshmallows and arrange them in that 3D space, so just randomize them. And after adding the 3D camera, this is what it looked like. Uh, I wanted to create a transition from this shot to the next. And for that, I added another marshmallow. And this time as the camera zoomed in, the marshmallow would just enlarge and sort of collide with the camera, revealing a luma fade to go into the next shot. For this next shot of the close-up of the tub, uh, what I did was similar to the first clip, I added uh, speed ramps so that the tub will just sort of slide into the frame and slow down as it showed up in the frame. And as it slid out, I added a speed ramp to make that slide out a lot faster. What I did was just create a mask. So I did that in Premiere Pro, so I just clicked on the square button under opacity and that created this mask. And what I did after was just rearrange it to align that mask to the end of the tub and it didn't have to be perfect because the transition is going to hide a lot of those imperfections what i did next was just to keyframe uh, frame by frame that tub as it exited the frame and uh, i made sure to layer the next clip in that transition to start as soon as this lid revealed an empty space in the clip. I didn't want any black to show, but I wanted the next clip to start showing as soon as that mask or, or that clip went by. This next clip of the lid of the can opening up was done in After Effects. So what I did first was mask out or take away the uh, the stick with CC simple wire removal. I had to add two of those effects, one for the stick at the top and one for the stick at the bottom. The simple CC wire removal effect was adding sort of blending or mirroring the background and it was making it transparent at the edges. I couldn't figure out how to fix that. So what I did was just zoom in a little bit more, crop it into the shot to just crop that stuff away. As soon as that lid opened, I wanted to reveal the next shot. So I added a mask to cut through that footage. So I started that mask as soon as the lid was in the halfway point 
so I could create something there. I created sort of like a half moon to sort of mask out the interior of the of the tub. And what I did, add a little bit of feathering, also keyframe the mask path, and also the mask expansion. And I just went frame by frame. I went first forward, and as the lid opened up, I adjusted the mask to cover the inside of that tub. I also went backwards and adjusted the mask accordingly just to make sure that the only thing I was masking out was the inside of the tub. It required a lot of finessing and a lot of playing around with mask expansion as well as the mask path to make sure that you got that mask as close and as accurate as possible. This next shot of the marshmallows was just very straightforward. It was just shot at 120 frames per second and what I just did was just slow it down to 20%. Now the next shot of the stop motion of the candy canes, that was quite simple as well. I opened After Effects and I imported all the shots of the candy canes. I made sure that I clicked on Camera Raw Sequence so that After Effects imported it as a video clip as opposed to individual photos. I didn't make any adjustments on Camera Raw here because I was going to color correct this later on. So I just clicked OK and went on to the next step. I did a little bit of time remapping inside of After Effects as I wanted this clip to be a little slower. Next, I added uh, again a key light effect to key out that blue. The reason why I didn't use a green screen this time was because there is some green in the candy cane, so it wouldn't have made sense because that key light would have keyed out that green in the candy canes as well. So that's why I used a blue screen instead. I also brought in a matte choker effect to clean up the edges of that candy cane. I also brought back that empty background clip and later I also added a Lumetri color effect to try to blend in and color match the candy canes to the background a little bit more. Next, I duplicated that stop motion clip. I adjusted the position and the scale of these two clips. I had one clip on the top left and I had another clip on the bottom right. The whipped cream shot was very simple. It was just adding some speed ramping to it. And I reversed the first whipped cream shot to make it a little bit more interesting. The last shot was just a stable tripod shot, but I wanted to add movement to it. So what I did was just add a slight scale in to the shot. You don't want to scale in or zoom in too much because you start to lose quality if you zoom in too much, but a little bit, it's good enough. And to make that shot even more interesting, I added fog or smoke to the shot. So I had this stock clip of just fog going through the frame uh, and I selected a certain portion of it and I added it on top of that last shot. And I just added a cross dissolve at the beginning and at the end of it. I changed the blending mode from normal to screen and I lowered down to the opacity considerably to about uh, 9 or 10 and I created a keyframe for opacity in between. So the smoke would be subtle enough to make the shot a little bit more interesting without being over the top. So this is it for today's video. I hope you learned a trick or two that you could implement in your next video as well. And again, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you learned something new, please hit that like button. Your support will be greatly appreciated. And that is all for today, guys. Until next time.